So, Freddy, how music can save Brazil? Well, first of all, bom dia, Pedro. <laughs> it's great to be here and be here with you on your show. And, you know, music is, is, is one of the most amazing gifts from God that we all have. And Brazil, of all the countries on the planet, has an, a, a, such a profound relationship with music, all the way from its African roots and the rhythms of Brazil and its cross-section with the tremendous influences of Europe. Um, I know we were, we were talking about all the genres of music that there are that I've been able to be fortunate enough to play in, from rock and roll with Carlos Santana, to uh, R&B with Earth, Wind and Fire, to working with Prince, to working with Madonna, I mean, all these different things that um, I've been so lucky to do. But, you know, you asked me this really uh, fun question. If, if, if I had to be stranded on a deserted island in the middle of the ocean, right, what music would I want to listen to? And in one word, Brazilian. No question about it. Why? The harmonies, the emotion, the wide variety of rhythms, and the tremendous way that it touches everything from the core of our body all the way to the top of our spirit and of course in our heart. Um, my mother is from Colombia, South America, from Cali. Uh, my father is a Russian, German, Polish guy from the Bronx. And I grew up in a home where I was hearing all the music of Latin America, particularly Brazilian music, as well as the music of Stravinsky and Bach and Brahms and Beethoven. So I grew up in this environment where I was in the middle of a bridge. And my whole life has been about bridging different styles of music and coming up with the gifts that the music can bring to people. So you ask a question, uh, Pedro, how can music be of value, especially now in the disruptive times that Brazil is going through right now? Um, one of the things we use in the world of music to talk about disruption is the word dissonance. It's when you have two notes or more that are fighting each other. You have this dissonance going on. Well, one of the most beautiful things about music is that we know how to resolve these tensions in the music. We understand the resolution of it. And the one thing that makes music such an incredible tool is that it's one of the few things we willingly listen to. See, most people shut out the world. The world se pega, it's hard, it's, it's duro, right? There's a lot of edge out there. And so most of us have to walk around in the world wearing armor just to protect ourselves from everything from advertising to violence to verbal violence, all kinds of things that we have to deal with. Well, music is one of those things where we let our guard down. The moment we hear a great rhythm, the moment we hear a beautiful guitar, the moment we hear piano, the moment we hear the power of music, we open up our hearts and our ears, right? And it's very important because what we're doing now with this philosophy that I've been working with for the past 15 years, I call it music applied to life or music applied to business. This is something that we are working very closely with some of the largest companies in the world to bring the power of music to the way people listen. So the first thing I want to talk about is listening. Because if we talk about listening, we're at the root of all communication. And music is one of the few things we willingly listen to. I'm going to stop right there. Yeah. I know I'm kind of, I'm, I'm, I'm fishing right now. Yeah. But it's okay. It's, it's going to be three minutes maximum in your interview. So okay. you have to be very concise. Good. And now you, you can, this, you, 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 you made a big introduction. Was it good? I don't even... Perfect. It Perfect. That, that's what the problem but it was long. is this gridlock between the left and the, and the right. Listen to music, is a, is you can guard down, guard down and uh, you can start the dialogue. Okay. So... Because what I want to do for you, Pedro, mm -hmm. is as I'm talking and I'm getting a feel for what I'm going to say... So, Pedro, we were talking about question and answer. In dialogue, every time we speak to each other, there's a question and there's an answer in a perfect world. We listen to each other so that we can answer questions, right? Well, guess what? You know what's incredible is that the most successful music in the world 
is a blend of question and answer. So like, of course, when I think of a Jorge Ben's Mashkinada, right? You have a question, right? Oh, 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 oh. Question. The answer, opa, 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 right? When you think of Mozart, or when you think of jazz, I miss the Saturday dance, ba ba I heard they crowded the floor, ba ba It's always a question and an answer. Now, when you think about the structure of music and you think about the way people have a conversation, you can start to see that the best conversations, the best way for a worker and a boss to have a dialogue is when there's a question and there's an answer. And this is what music does all day long. This is what gives it a gift. Um, another thing to think about that's very, very powerful is how we listen. You know, we speak at about 150 words a minute, but our minds go at 600 to 1,000 words a minute. So when you say something to somebody, they are thinking four to six times faster. And that's the reason why we, we miss so many details. And this is costing businesses all over the world millions and millions of dollars every day. In fact, right here in the United States, four out of five people, 80% of the workforce in America is disengaged with what they're doing. So can you imagine how this affects life and work in all parts of the world? It is the Gallup poll in America, but this is a typical statistic that you will find all over the world. And at a time when the world is looking for new ways and new things to do, music has amazing answers. For example, all music has structure. It begins with a melody. The melody is the part of the song that we all know, right? Like if we talk about Don Jobim, for example, da 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 ba 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 ba. This is the melody, right? Right? Da di do do ba do ba do do di do di. Wave. The moment you hear this, you go wave. Tristeza. You you know what it is. So the melody is the identity of a song. Any song, you sing the melody, and you know what the song is, right? Harmony is a function of the chords. It gives the background, it's the uh, foundation, if you will, for the melody to sing. So when I go to businesses, I show people how the melody is connected to the leader, the spotlight, if you will, and how harmony is connected to the team that supports the leader. But then there's a third element that's so important that a lot of people forget about, and that's the rhythm. And God, I mean, who has more rhythm than Brazil? right? The rhythm is the tempo. It's the execution point. Do we do, do, we do it as a samba? Do we do it like this? What tempo do we execute the ideas of the melody and the harmony? Well, when you start thinking about rhythm, in the way your day unfolds, the way time unfolds, it helps you execute your day better. So this is what we're doing with music applied to life. We're using the melody to be the spotlight, harmony to be the background and the support, the team, and rhythm to be all about the management of time, tempo, synchronicity. These are the things that rhythm brings. Now when melody harmony and rhythm all come together, you land on this magical place and it's called the score. The score is the results, the outcome of the proper use of melody, harmony, and rhythm. Perfect. So how can you apply all these uh, thoughts or concepts to a account like Brazil. I try to put you in, together with Brazil in order to you have to go there to see and uh, to help Brazil to overcome these problems. So now that we've talked a little bit about the structure of music, 
We now have to talk about how these, these four pieces, melody, harmony, rhythm, and the score, how it all comes together. And the key to understanding this are two forces. One force is disruption and dissonance. This is the force that is the unexpected. Every day we get up and we have a plan in our hearts, but something else happens because the nature of life, the nature of business is the unexpected. It's just a reality of, of life. We make a plan, but something else happens. Sometimes it goes the way we want it to go. Sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes the stock market is like this. Sometimes it's terrible, right? It's up and down. This is the unknown that we deal with. And music represents, can represent the dark sides and the thunderclouds that go on. It can emotionally emote that. The other side of it is how we listen, how we choose to make the right decisions, even when those decisions happen unexpectedly. How do we navigate every single day with the disruption and dissonance that's coming to us. Music has a way of resolving this. Music has a way of slowing the tempo down. Music has a way of pulling the melody away and letting the harmony take over. Music has different moods and ways to deal with the light and the darkness that we're faced with. And um, the, the key skill, and there's two that I want to share with you. There are two of them. The first one has to do with what we call the space between the notes. Think about it. If I sing uh, one of the greatest songs that Brazil is so famous for, of course, is Girl from Ipanema, right? This melody is a melody that you can play anywhere in the world. And it doesn't matter what country you're in. If you go, dun, da, da, do, di, da, 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 do, di, da, da, People stop and go, Antonio Carlos Jobim, Brazil. It doesn't matter whether you are in Italia, whether you are in West Africa, whether you are uh, in Japan. The moment that you play this, people already recognize the beauty of it. Why is this one of Brazil's most treasured songs? Because Brazil has millions and millions of songs. Why is Empanema so famous? I believe that the most important part of Empanema is the space in the melody. Dun, 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 da, 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 dun, dun. This space pulls you into the conversation. It makes you want to listen deeper. And it's that space in the music that invites your heart to dance that slow, sexy bossa nova that's so magical. And this is what pulls people in, in the way we talk to each other. Because if I talk to the camera very, very quickly and I start expressing different ideas and I just try to sell you a lot of products and services and talk a lot about, you know, let's see if we can make more money, let's see if we can do this and do that. If I talk to you very quickly, it's not very effective. But if I speak to you like, this is a very important concept that we use the space between the notes. Ah. Translate it to the email. The email is a part of ah, our yes. lives. Yeah. Now, when you think about it, you know, we live in this world of, of very different forms of communication from texting to email, tweets, all these different ways that we communicate these days. But the same thing can happen with the space between your words, right? You could write to your employee, say, uh, Dear John, I really want you to start stepping up in a more aggressive way. I want you to be part of the team and I want you to really look at all the different things that we have to do. You've been slagging. You haven't been doing the right job. You could say all that. And the email would be this long and this dense. And John would read it and go, oh. Or you could write an email that says, John, if we could have a conversation and speak to the issues, I would love that. Call me. Done. Those few words would cause a shift in the relationship 
Just like a great melody that has space in it, the same thing can apply to the space that you do when you communicate your emails. Last question. When uh, the, 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 the businessman lost half of the clients and uh, he has financial problems, a lot of people left the company and the company is going to the bankruptcy and uh, he's in a very dire straits. Music could be the last resort for this guy. How can in this situation, how can music can help him to get rid of this situation? Music is the key to the heart. It is what makes people connected in ways that nothing else can. There is nothing on planet Earth that people call the undisputed international language. Nobody can argue with the fact that music is more universal a language than any other language that we have words to. It transcends words. Therefore, understanding how music in all its different forms can connect with your client, with your workers, and being able to position the power of melody, harmony, and rhythm will be central to the way you listen to your clients and really realize what they truly want. And that's what can take a business from being on the brink of disaster to a new way of looking at it and regaining the confidence and your user base and your customer base, simply by connecting. This guy is very good. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm pretty comfortable with Are you good uh, yes, with this? Yes, because now I'm going to put a lot of uh, things in the, in the middle, you in the show, this kind of thing. Ah, okay. Yeah. Did you get some good stuff last night? Yes, wonderful. I love the idea of silent and listen. Gosh, I didn't know that. In Portuguese, not the same. Silencio e escutar. No, it doesn't different. work. In news, it, it, but 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 you you just show the English. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Everyone knows. Listen, silent. Yeah. Right. It doesn't matter what country, really. I'm gonna put this in the material in the when you talk uh, when in the show we, I I recorded the word listen and silent. In silent, it's perfect. Wow. Yeah. 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 Good. Um, okay, I, my man. I'm planning to call, I want you to know, and maybe we should put this on there. I'm mm -hmm. going to be, uh, I'm, I'm putting a book together. All this is uh, part of intellectual property that will be in a book. This methodology, melody, harmony, are you, are you rolling? Yeah. So, we will be rolling out a book later in 2016 that's going to demonstrate how melody is connected to leadership, Harmony is connected to collaboration. Rhythm is connected to synchronicity. And all this leads to the score. And uh, this will be a book that we are going to be releasing later this year. Taking all these things that I've just shared with you, which we've been developing for over a decade. And uh, 2016 is the year that we'll bring it together. And we so look forward to bringing it to the good people of Brazil. Thank you. Fantastic. I'm Freddie Ravel, and music has been the essence of my entire life. Music is the undisputed international language. Music is the essence of who we are. But there's so much more we can be doing with music. He's a musical director. Very talented, Mr. Freddie Ravel. Freddie Ravel. Over the years, after working with people like Madonna and Earth, Wind and & Fire and Carlos Santana, we've been able to take things that, that musicians can access, the way frequencies work, the way the beat works, the way harmonies work, the way a melody sings. We've taken those elements and have broken them up into special units that people can use in a very logical and structural way to empower their business. The music of business, a whole new way to use the power of melody, harmony, rhythm, and the score to empower the way we listen, the way we lead. We're in a world now where disruption is a daily deal. But music, we call that dissonance. And we have a way of resolving dissonance. And a lot of it has to do with how we listen. The reason I am here is to share with you a discovery 
to empower the way we work and live. The Mother Earth, the Holy Grail, upon which all communication is received, is listening. Nice and big. Give me a round of applause! <laughs> oh, I love you! We tend to miss a lot of detail, and this is costing trillions of dollars in lost revenues. We've worked with many clients like Google, Apple, Morgan Stanley, Walmart. When they understand how music and business work together, there's a whole new level of leadership, team building, time management, success and innovation within their own company. Once they get this, profits go through the roof. Working around the space of melody, harmony, rhythm and score is what gets us there. <laughs>